Hey guys, you're going to see a video shortly on the topic of how to get your black belt as fast as possible. It's something that I've heard that's been brought up a lot recently, um, the quickest way to achieve your black belt. And one of the things I want to preface that video with is jujitsu is not something really that you're looking to accomplish. It's not something that you accomplish. Jujitsu is something that you add to your life that becomes part of your life because it increases the quality of your life. It actually uh, makes your life better. So just like meditation, or healthy eating or working out those are all things that basically improve the quality of your life so jujitsu is not something to really try to rush through you know a lot of people want to rush and race to get to the black belt but jujitsu is a practice and just doing it every day has the potential to make you a better person mentally physically and spiritually so I want you guys to really think about enjoying the journey and just realizing that every day that you train, you're going to be getting benefit from it in some way, the friendships that you make, but also the inner work that gets done, um, improving your, your conditioning, improving your fitness, um, you know, training your mind to be able to deal with stress and pressure, all of those things that really, really make a huge impact in your quality of life. So anyways, guys, check out this video where I talk about how to achieve your black belt as fast as you can. I share a little bit of my story with you guys about how I got my black belt in under 10 years from arguably one of the toughest people to get a, a black belt from, Hickson Gracie. And then um, some tips on also how to uh, accelerate your, your growth and the speed at which you actually um, in learn. Um, some of some really, really helpful tips. So check it out, guys. Hey, guys. I just want to talk to you guys about a subject that's been brought up a lot lately. And um, that subject is basically how to get your black belt as fast as you can. Um, it's a really interesting subject. Um, and I think the reason it comes up so much nowadays is because on average, what most people say is it takes about 10 years to get a black belt jujitsu, which for most people, um, I think they consider that a really, really long time, 10 years. Um, and so one of the things I, I want to talk about with receiving the black belt is really just enjoying the process and enjoying the journey. And it's not so much about the belt. Um, what's important is really that you're improving every day, that you're developing skill every day, that you're learning, that you're growing every day and getting better. And I know even on your journey um, in training, there's ups and downs. So some days you'll feel like you're doing great. Some days that you're, you'll feel like you're not doing great. You know, all of us have those days. All of us have those peaks and those valleys and we even hit plateaus. But in the long run, you're constantly growing and you're constantly getting better as long as you can be consistent, as long as you can keep training. The whole fascination and the whole um, obsession with uh, getting your black belt as fast as you can. Um, it's certainly possible to achieve your black belt in under 10 years. I did it. Um, many, many other people have achieved their black belt in under 10 years. And so I'll just share with you a little bit my, my story of how I got my black belt. Um, it took me a little bit over eight years to get my black belt. And uh, that was even including about a year and a half off. I took a, a year off. I blew out both my knees in a tournament the day I got my purple belt. Um, I won my division and then uh, I competed in the open division. In the first match in the open division, I blew out both my ACLs. Uh, and so I took a year off uh, from training. I didn't have insurance at the time and I didn't have the surgery. So I had to rehab myself. Um, took about a year before I could get back on the mats and start training again. And then when my best friend Hawks and Gracie died, um, I didn't know at that time I was thinking about even quitting jujitsu. Um, I didn't know if I was going to continue training and it took me six months to be able to get back on the mats after his passing. And so even with that time off, um, you know, I was still able to get my black belt in under 10 years, but it really took um, an almost an unhealthy obsession. And it was something that I was able to do because I was young and I didn't have any other responsibilities. And so my first two years, I think many people know my story. I moved from Oklahoma to Los Angeles to train when I was just 20 years old. And basically I didn't have any friends and I didn't know anybody. And all I wanted to do is train jujitsu. So 
I started showing up at the academy. I showed up in the morning when it would open at seven o'clock and some nights I would be there till seven in the evening and some other nights I'd be there from seven till nine at night. So I was spending about 70 hours a week at the gym the first few years that I was there. I was there actually so much that they offered me a job and they asked uh, if I wanted to be the secretary. And so I would help answer phone calls and I would you know, check people in at the desk and I would help sell merchandise. So it was really literally almost a, an obsession for me. And during that time, even though I was training, even when I wasn't training, when I was at home, I was still thinking about jujitsu. It was constantly on my mind. Um, pretty soon after I had moved out, my brother and a couple other friends moved out and they were staying at a good friend of ours house who had mats in his back, uh, the back house. And so I would always be over there and we would always be experimenting and playing and testing out techniques and playing around with positions just to really kind of understand the positions better, to see what we could do. If someone grabbed me like this or if someone's going for this, what we could do to try to get out or, you know, we would kind of experiment with all these techniques. It was kind of like a lab where we would just kind of train and play with each other and see, you know, how things worked and see if we could stop things or see if we can counter things. And so my brain was on jujitsu 24 seven. And I think, um, I got my, I got my purple belt. I received my purple belt in two years. So that's really, really fast, especially under Hickson. Um, and I think a lot of people know Hickson had really, really strict standards, um, to be able to get belts because his level was so high. And so I was able to get my purple belt in two years after training, but, um, it re really required me to have my mind on jujitsu 24 seven. And for a lot of people, that's just not possible with other responsibilities, other obligations with work. You know, I was fortunate that I was working at the, the academy. And so what's, uh, what's crazy is even though, even the times that I wasn't training, I was watching private lessons. I was watching the class. I was watching the classes. There was times when I would actually get injured or I feel, felt like I was maybe a little bit over training and I would take a day off or two days off. Or if I had an injury, sometimes I would take a, a week or two off to get better, um, to let the injury heal up. And one of the crazy things that I noticed and one of the things I talk about all the time is a lot of times when I would take that time off a week or two weeks off, what I would notice is when I came back, a lot of times I would be actually better or I would feel better or my training would feel better. I felt like I was having an easier time with uh, the training partners that I was struggling with before. And so I can't recommend, you know, just watching jujitsu enough. If that's one of the things you really want to do is just try to get better. Um, just trying to watch jujitsu and immerse yourself in jujitsu as much as you can. And fortunately nowadays, um, you know, if that is your goal is to get good at jujitsu as fast as you can, it's easier than ever to get good at jujitsu. I mean, it's, uh, people don't really understand how blessed they are nowadays to be able to have access to so much information. And that's one of the things about my site Hidden Jiu Jitsu is people have access. They can watch it in their, you can actually learn Jiu Jitsu at home. Um, I used to have to drive uh, from a place called El Segundo all the way to West LA. And then um, a couple years later when we had moved to the Pacific Palisades, we had, I had to drive to Pacific Palisades, which would sometimes take an hour drive in LA traffic. Um, nowadays, people have the convenience of being able to watch and learn Jiu Jitsu from some of the best instructors in the world at the convenience and the convenience of their home. And the other thing that's amazing nowadays with technology is that besides being able to watch the convenience at your convenience and being able to learn from the best instructors in the world, um, you can also have any problem, any, any, any position, any situation where you're struggling, the answers you can have like that, you can have it immediately in the palm of your hand. Um, that's one of the amazing things. It's almost like YouTube. Uh, you know, you can go and basically look up and figure out what position you're in, where you're struggling, what, and usually you'll be able to find the answer pretty quickly and see how to escape or how. To, so that's definitely one of the things about hidden Jiu Jitsu that, um, I know I, gosh, I wish it was an available resource to me as I was learning. Um, you know, a lot of times I wouldn't have had to drive to the gym and those answers to the problems, a lot of these problems, you know, uh, because I was just doing classes all the time. I was just doing class all the time. I didn't have money for private lessons. Um, and so what happened was sometimes I would be struggling with a situation or struggling with a problem or I wouldn't know how to get out of some situation or some submission hold that I, I kept getting caught in. And sometimes it would take weeks to months before 
an instructor would cover that in class and I'd be like, gosh, I've been struggling with that for months or I've been struggling with that for weeks. I keep getting caught in that and I, you know, I didn't know how, to, I didn't have the answer in the palm of my hand. I didn't have it available to me until the instructor taught that situation in class. And so that's one of the amazing things with this online content is you have the answers available to you. The other great thing about online content is that, especially with the hidden jujitsu content, is what I really try to do is I really try to teach the fundamentals. And for anyone, any any expert, any high level uh, athlete will tell you the most important thing to develop if you want to achieve a high level in any activity you want to do is having a strong foundation and really developing the fundamentals. And so that's one of the things that I really do with hidden jiu-jitsu. And it's been my really my focus is really uh, teaching the advanced details to the basics. And that was really what Hickson's game was all about is he was execute the he was able to execute the basics and able to impose his game on anyone that came into the gym. Any world champion that came and trained with him, he was able to impose his game on him because of his understanding, because of how he was able to deal with their technique by with his basics. And so that's something that I really, really try to pass on in Hinjutsu and in my teachings is really the, the, the minute details, the finer understanding of the basic techniques so that they work regardless if someone is trying to defend, um, that you can overcome the defenses and also that they, they work um, even when someone's struggling or someone's resisting and it doesn't require energy. You don't have to actually ramp up your energy expenditure to get these things to be effective. You know, we always say that jiu-jitsu should work against bigger and stronger opponents, and that's very true. And that's something that I really hold dear to um, dear to myself um, is being able to teach other people so that they can overcome bigger and stronger opponents. And that's really it comes down to just some of the finer details and the fundamentals. And so, you know, enjoy the journey, guys. Really enjoy the journey. Jiu-jitsu is such a beautiful art. And the crazy thing is, is you will never stop learning. So even if you rush to get to the black belt and you get your black belt, you know, um, the black belt, there's, there's, there's a heavy price to pay. There's, there's a huge responsibility with the black belt. You're really representing the art, you know, and, um, and, and once you receive your black belt, you know, it's also, it's also a responsibility of, of being a leader, leader head, being a good role model, uh, passing on the art to others. Um, and the crazy thing with that is you never stop learning. You know, I've been a black belt now for 15 years and I'm still getting better every year, huge, huge growth. And it, it even seems like almost every year, it seems I'm getting better and better and I'm learning more each year. Um, I'm getting deeper and deeper into the basics and really starting to understand what jujitsu is really about. I would say it's really only been the last five years that I can feel that I really understand what jujitsu is about and the softness and the gentleness and how to do things in that way so that everything becomes effective. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, you know, it's not about doing it fast. You know, the important thing is that you're just learning and growing and improving and that will never end. That will never end. That will never stop. As long as you continue to train, as long as you keep training, you're going to keep learning and keep getting better. But, you know, if your goal is to get as good as you can as quickly as possible, which is something, you know, I, I admire because that was my goal too. That was something that for me, I, I was obsessed with jujitsu. So I definitely admire that. You know, it's easier than ever nowadays with the technology that we have and with all of the information out there to really accelerate your learning. And um, what's so cool is people with busy lives, with families or whatever, you know, they get home from work and maybe they can't make it to training. You can sit and watch on your computer and still be learning, still be growing, still be improving. And um, there's something to say about just immersing your mind in jujitsu. Um, you know, I, like I said, there were so many times that I would just watch and watch and watch and watch the trainings. And um, I noticed I would get way better from just watching other people train. And so really watching jujitsu, just having your mind on it, just thinking about it will really, really help you to improve. And so visualization is another thing that I really recommend, you know, for a lot of people. Um, there's been a lot of studies done on visualization and closing your eyes and visualizing training and stuff like that. So that's definitely something that I think is helpful. And there's been studies done on it about how effective it is for athletes. So, um, but also just watching videos. You know, and that's why I'm so happy that I've created a resource available to so many people 
that um, that really I hope really helps your ability to learn, helps your you to grow and really understand the fundamentals, really understand the concepts and the philosophies of jujitsu, because that will carry you down all the way from white belt to black belt. You're never going to stop using those fundamentals. And once you understand those fundamentals, you know, you can start to apply them in other areas of your game. So anyways, guys, thank you for sharing your time with me and uh, hope to see you guys soon at a seminar.